Welcome to section 34 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video we'll be discussing Yersinia pestis and Yersinia enterocolitica, which you can see right here. This scene takes place back during the Middle Ages when the infamous bubonic plague killed millions of people. Our first character to the scene is this guy who's come to help those in need. As you can see, he's holding a big bowl of yerba mate tea, which he intends to give to the sick. Yerba sounds like Yersinia, so the bowl of yerba mate tea will be our symbol for Yersinia pestis. Now notice that we've shown a do not enter sign on the door. This is pretty thoughtful considering that the people inside are deathly ill and don't want to spread the disease. The do not enter sign sounds like enterocolitica and is here to help you remember Yersinia enterocolitica. I know, we've used an enter sign to represent enterococcus. However, just think of the sick people in this scene with the do not enter sign for Yersinia enterocolitica. Also, the guy holding the yerba mate tea should help you think of Yersinia. So hopefully this will help you keep things straight in your mind. Before we go any further, pay attention to the background. And that's right, we've intentionally included a pink sunset, which is to help you remember that both of these organisms are gram negative. This is a gram stain of Yersinia enterocolitica. However, Yersinia pestis would have a very similar morphology under the microscope. Notice that the organisms are pink and rod shaped, hence the gram negative bacilli classification. Okay, notice that we've also shown several sacks of yerba mate stuff next to the doctor guy. The sack is completely surrounding the yerba mate stuff just like the capsule of Yersinia surrounds and protects the organism from phagocytosis. So remember, Yersinia pestis is encapsulated. You should remember that this information is specific to Yersinia pestis because it's in close proximity to the yerba mate tea. Everything next to the do not enter sign will be specific to Yersinia enterocolitica. Next, notice that we've shown a red canopy covering the entire alleyway. This is similar to the pavilion we've shown in other images. It's outdoors, but provides some covering. So. It's like the person is inside of a home, yet outside at the same time. Just like this organism can exist inside or outside of the host cell. So the canopy covering is here to help you remember that Yersinia pestis and Yersinia enterocolitica are facultative intracellular. The Middle Ages is generally thought of as a relatively insanitary period of time. So we've shown a contaminated rat, prairie dog, and some fleas accompanying this doctor guy. This is to help you remember that Yersinia pestis is transmitted through rats, prairie dogs, and fleas. All right, notice that we've added a plague doctor mask on this guy because this is what the doctors wore back during the time of the bubonic plague. The beak-like mask is reported to have been filled with scented items in attempt to protect the plague doctors from the foul scent of those infected. The plague doctor mask is in this image to help you remember that Yersinia pestis causes the bubonic plague. It's called the bubonic plague because it causes buboes, which are erythematous swollen and painful lymph nodes. These are commonly present in the armpits, so we've shown this guy on the ground with bleeding red armpits to help you remember that Yersinia pestis causes buboes. As you can see, the doctor is attempting to make him feel better by placing the yerba mate stuff all over his back. This is an image of a bubo present in the axillary region. You can see it right here. As you can see, it's a swollen area in the armpit and is a characteristic finding of the bubonic plague. Okay, that's all you need to know about Yersinia pestis. Now let's move on to discuss Yersinia enterocolitica. In addition to the plague doctor, we've shown another helper to the scene. As you can see, she's carrying some food to those in need. Just like the plague doctor with the sacks, the bags are here to help you remember that Yersinia enterocolitica is also encapsulated. If you look closely at the bags, you can see that she's carrying pork and milk. This is to help you remember that Yersinia enterocolitica is transmitted through contaminated milk and pork. Next, notice that we've shown a dog contaminating this already unsanitary alleyway. Yep, that's right, he's pooping right into the sewer. This is to help you remember that Yersinia enterocolitica is transmitted through pet feces. Now you can see that we've also shown a guy writing on a notepad with a very large feather pen. This guy along with the girl are likely employed by the city to count the infected people and provide supplies to those in need. So the guy is carefully taking notes of each infected person. Anyway, pen sounds like appendicitis, so we've shown him holding a huge feather pen to help you remember that Yersinia enterocolitica causes pseudo-appendicitis. We've also shown him writing on the notepad to help you remember that this bug causes Rider syndrome. So writing for Rider syndrome. As you can see, the city is in need of a lot of help. Just as the city workers started to pass by, this guy bolted outside from the door with a do not enter sign on it to vomit all over the street. After all, he didn't want to make a huge mess inside of his house. Anyway, this guy is here to help you remember that Yersinia enterocolitica causes vomiting and diarrhea. Finally, notice that we've shown a flower staff against the wall. 
Just like in our other videos, the flower staff is here to help you remember that Yersinia pestis and Yersinia enterocolitica can be treated with fluoroquinolones. It's not in close proximity to the yerba mate or the do not enter sign because we wanted you to remember that it can be useful for both organisms. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 27-year-old male presents to the emergency department while on vacation in California due to a fever, chills, and axillary pain. Additional history reveals that while driving through Nevada, he accidentally ran over a rodent. He was very distressed by the situation, so he spent 30 minutes bearing it on the side of the road. Physical examination reveals tender lymphadenopathy in the left axilla. A sample of fluid from the lymph node reveals gram-negative bacilli. This patient's condition is most likely caused by A. coccidioides imidis, B. Yersinia pestis, C. blastomyces dermatitidis, D. Yersinia enterocolitica, or E. Cryptococcus neoformans. Okay, there are two key points from the question stem that should help you identify the causal organism. First, the patient was exposed to a rodent. So, as the question stem states, he accidentally ran over a rodent and then spent 30 minutes bearing it on the side of the road. Second, he is presenting with tender lymphadenopathy in the left axilla, which is describing a bubo. Therefore, the causal organism is Yersinia pestis. So, B is the correct answer. From the image, recall that the guy with the red swollen armpit right here is here to help you remember that Yersinia pestis causes buboes. A is incorrect. It's true that this fungus is commonly present in the southwestern United States and California. However, it does not cause buboes. C is also incorrect. This is a fungus that is commonly present in the eastern and central part of the United States and does not cause buboes. D is incorrect because this is transmitted through dog feces, contaminated milk, and pork and typically presents with gastrointestinal problems. Finally, E is incorrect because this is a fungal infection that's commonly transmitted through pigeon droppings and presents with neurological findings, not buboes. So again, the correct answer is B, Yersinia pestis. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about Yersinia pestis and Yersinia enterocolitica.